points. Uh, stoichiometry deals with relationships between amounts of reactants and products involved in a reaction. And the relationship is really given to you by the coefficients. Yeah, I think I did. Uh, I think I did start recording, yes. Okay, so um, the coefficients in your balance equation actually tell you how the changes in the amounts of reactants and products are related. Note the key word here is change, okay? You're relating changes, you're not relating the actual amounts that you may have there before or after the reaction. You actually, uh, the coefficients actually tell you how the changes are related. So the amounts that are involved, those are by, by that we mean the changes in the amounts are directly proportional so according to your balance equation here so here's a balance equation for the burning of hydrogen gas to form water okay according to this balance equation the mole to mole ratio of hydrogen to oxygen okay changes in moles of hydrogen in comparison to the changes in moles of oxygen moles h2 over moles o2 is given by the coefficients in the balance equation. The coefficient of hydrogen is two, so that's two moles of hydrogen, and the coefficient of oxygen is one, so it's two is to one, okay? So immediately from this balance equation, then we can say the moles H2 over moles O2 is two is to one, two moles H2 for one mole O2. Let's look at this equation. What if I knew moles of O2? How can I solve for moles of H2? I just multiply both sides by moles of O2, right? That will cancel out moles of O2 on the left. So I can say moles of H2 equals moles of O2 times 2 moles H2 over 1 mole of O2. In essence, then, this ratio of coefficients in your balance equation serves as a conversion factor. If you know by how much one element, one reactant or product changes, you can figure out how the others change just, just by using the mole to mole ratio given in the coefficients. Okay? So let's apply that to this example right here. Uh, again, this is the same equation we have burning of hydrogen to form water. 2H2 plus O2 gives you 2H2O. How many moles of H2O are produced if 0.2 moles of O2 is consumed during the reaction? Then you just say, okay, I'm looking for moles of H2O and I'm given moles of O2, right? So what should I do to the moles of O2? What conversion factor do I need? I need the conversion for O2 to H2O. So uh, balance equation tells me I have one mole of O2 for two moles of water. So one mole O2 here, two moles H2O up here. Okay? And so this will give me, yeah, I'm given how much? 0 0.20 moles of O2 times two moles of water for one mole of O2. So that's fairly straightforward. And as you can see, according to this, this is going to be equal to, oops, 0 0.20 times two is 0 0.40 moles of H2O, okay? And that sort of makes sense, you know, uh, it's one is to two, so if you have point Two of the, if you lost 0.2 of this, you expect to get 0.4 of the product, okay? One is a two ratio. All right. So that's the whole idea behind stoichiometry. Now, to emphasize the fact that we're dealing with changes, here's a question uh, that uh, will kind of make you think about which numbers do you have to use. Let's say you have um, two magnesiums plus O2 gives you two MgO. That's your balance equation. A two moles of magnesium will react with a mole of O2 to give you two moles of magnesium oxide. Suppose you ignited half a mole of magnesium and you have 0.1 moles of magnesium that remains after the reaction. How much MgO was produced? So you're looking for moles of MgO produced. 
that's equal to moles of magnesium that was consumed, right? Times conversion factor here is how, what? MgO to Mg. 2 is to 2, right? So 2 moles MgO or 2 moles Mg. The question here, which of these two numbers would you use? What did we say the coefficients tell you? The coefficients tell you how the changes are related. So this is the change in moles of magnesium. So anytime you say moles of something in a, involved in a reaction, what we actually mean is the change in moles. So by how much did the magnesium actually change in moles? If you start off with 0.5 and you end up with 0.1, you actually lost 0 0.400 moles of magnesium, okay? So you start with 0 0.500 and then you end up with 0.1. So your change in your magnesium is 0.4. So that's the number you'd have to use in the calculation. You'd say 0.4 moles magnesium times... 2 moles MgO for 2 moles of Mg. So multiply by 2, divide by 2, you get the same answer. This is going to be 0 0.400 moles of MgO. Moles magnesium cancels out. All right? So uh, that's the answer to that question. Now, if you want to know how many grams of magnesium oxide was produced, what would you have to do with this? You just have to change it to, we can change it to grams if you want. What would you have to do? Just multiply it by the molar mass, right? So just change moles to grams. What if I knew how many grams of magnesium I had before and after? Then whatever I have, whatever change I have in magnesium, I change it to moles. Okay, so if I, I'm given the amount in grams, then I change it to moles. But so it's important then for solving stoichiometry problems, it's a good strategy to just change all the information that you have to moles, figure out the change in moles, and then you can convert whatever that answer is in moles back to grams if you want to. Yes, in this particular case, you multiply it by the molar mass. So what's the molar mass of magnesium oxide? Magnesium is how much? 24.3. And oxygen is 16. Uh, magnesium is 24.3 something. What was it? You have a periodic table. Can't seem to get on. seem to get on the internet. Uh, okay, what's the molar mass of magnesium? 24.3 something. Okay, so this is going to be 0 0.3, 10, 40.3. So you multiply by 40.3 grams per mole. Okay. So you can say point four zero zero moles of MgO times one mole of MgO down here and 40.3 grams of MgO. So 0.4 times 40.3. Okay. So this one right here. Here's a question, same, similar question, same reaction. 
Magnesium plus O2 gives you 2 MgO. 2, mag two moles of magnesium plus a mole of oxygen gives you 2 moles of MgO. So if I have 0.486 grams of magnesium burned, how much MgO can I get? So I have to change this first to moles, okay? And then you change. So what you would you have now? So you would say moles of MgO equals moles of magnesium times what's our ratio in the balance equation? 2 is to 2. So 2 moles MgO for 2 moles of Mg. Okay. So if I know moles of magnesium, how many moles of magnesium do I have? 0.486 grams Mg, change that to moles. So, one mole of Mg is 24.3 grams. So, 0.486 divided by 24.3 oops, gives you 0 0.0200 moles. So, this is 0 0.0200 moles of Mg. And so the answer here would be 0 0.0200 moles of MgO. Okay? So if you know it in grams, you change it to moles. If you know it in moles, you change it to grams. Okay. Uh, sometime later in your career in chemistry, in your courses in chemistry, you might find it useful to. Uh, use what's known as moles of reaction to solve stoichiometry problems. You don't have to, but uh, it could be useful later. So let me go over that. Uh, how much time we got? We got five minutes to go? All right. A mole of reaction is defined as the, the extent of reaction where the changes correspond to the actual, uh, the changes in moles of your reactants and products correspond to the coefficient in the balance equation. So let's say this is your balance equation. I say then I have a mole of this reaction if that the change that I'm observing involves a loss of one mole of N2, a loss of three moles of H2, and a, a gain of two moles of NH3, formation of two moles of NH3. Okay? So if we define X as the moles of reaction, then we can say the amount of nitrogen consumed is X moles, the amount of hydrogen consumed is 3x moles. The coefficient of hydrogen is 3. And the amount of NH3 that you're making is 2x moles. Okay? So you can see if you know x, you can calculate the amounts of reactants consumed. You can um, determine the amounts of products consumed. Conversely, if you know the amounts consumed, you can figure out x. Okay? So if you know how much N2 is consumed, you can figure out what X is. And if you know what X is, you can figure out all the other amounts. You can know what 3X is, and you can know what 2X is. Or if you know how much NH3 you made, okay, <laughs> then you can solve for X. And once you know X, you can solve for 3X, and you can solve for 2X. Oh, you know, you're given 2X. Right, let's illustrate that with this uh, problem here. You can solve this the the old the traditional way that I showed you earlier, or you can say, okay, let's see. How many moles of substances are involved if the reaction occurs to the extent of 0.5 moles? So we're saying X is 0 0.500 moles. Oops, 0.50 moles. So you say moles of nitrogen consumed would be X. Coefficient of nitrogen is X. So 0 0.50 moles of nitrogen was lost. Okay. Moles of hydrogen consumed would be 3x. So that's going to be 3 times 0 0.50 moles. That's just going to be 1.50 moles. And then you can say moles of NH3 produced is 2x. Why 2x? Because the coefficient of NH3 in, the, in this balance equation is 2. So 2 times 0.5 moles. So that would give you 1.0 moles. Okay. Uh, to be more 
precise in terms of terminology, we really should be putting deltas here because that's to emphasize the fact that these are really changes in the number of moles, okay? So if you have an extent of reaction is 0.5 moles, you just multiply that by the coefficient, you get the changes in your nitrogen, your hydrogen, and ammonia, okay? And sometimes you put a negative in front of this one to indicate that you're actually losing it. But if we're just dealing with absolute values, these would be the changes. Okay. And let's illustrate how we can use that strategy to solve this, to answer this question. Let's say, uh, so this one says, use moles of, moles of reaction to calculate moles of hydrogen and nitrogen consumed if 0.6 moles of ammonia are produced. Okay, so our changes would be for N2, it's going to be equal to X moles, right? For H2, it's going to be 3X moles. And for NH3, the change would be 2X moles, right? If X is the moles of reaction. So what do we know? What are we given here? We're given 0.6 moles of NH3 was consumed. So 0.6 must be equal to 2x, right? If I know 2x is 0.6, how do I solve for x? Divide both sides by 2. That's 0 0.30 moles. So this is 0 0.30 moles. So what is 3x then? 3 times 0 0.30 moles which is 0 0.90 moles, okay? So that's how you would solve it. Now, let's do this a traditional way. You would say, okay, 0 0.60 mole of NH3, okay? And your coefficients are two for NH3, one for N2. So you say two moles NH3, one mole and two, okay? And you can see 0 0.6 divided by two is 0 0.3. And that's the same answer we got here for nitrogen. And if we do it for H2, you say 0 0.6 moles of NH3 times three moles H2 over two moles NH3, okay? So 0 0.6 times 3 over 2 will give you 0.9 moles. Same answer. And I think that's uh, all we have for today as far as time-wise. So let me stop this.